With that, I'll yield back my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, and we'll uh, start uh, the questions. Um, and again, thank you for being here today. And you know, we've talked about some of this in the past with regards to, this, to the SNAP program. As you know, I'm a strong supporter of establishing a SNAP pilot program that restic restricts unhealthy food or beverages from being purchased with SNAP benefits. I was disappointed we were not able to include funding to implement a small voluntary, voluntary pilot in the final FY24 Ag Appropriations Bill. Uh, I think we really should look at this to see how it might help with health, health outcomes and prevent chronic disease. I have to ask that currently, does USDA have the authority to approve a demonstration project, which would be similar to a pilot, that allows states to restrict certain foods or beverages? <laughs> We'd have the authority to work collaboratively with the state, um, assuming that the uh, process was uh, contained proper evaluation. One of the big problems, Mr. Chairman, has been the lack of evaluation in what has been presented to us by states and cities in terms of the programs that they want to adopt. Uh, there's a tendency to think this is a relatively simple process. It's not. Um, but uh, but in, in response to your question, we would have the authority to do it. But we'd want to make sure if we did it that there would be a strong evaluation component to it. Uh, I would also say that there is a, I think we'd have to deal with a fairness issue here. Um, if you think about this, uh, somebody gets a SNAP payment, they go in, they buy a soda. Let, let, me, let me go on. I, I understand the program. You understand the program. I've got a lot of questions. And okay. I'm glad to hear that you do have the, uh, the authority to prove it. But since your first appointment as Secretary of Ag, the obesity rates among U.S. adults have increased by almost 9% from 33.8% in 2007-2008 to 42% of Americans in 2017-2018. About half of all Americans now have one or more preventable chronic disease, most of them diet-related or linked to diet in some uh, cases. So given the, this rise in obesity rates, is there any evidence that the SNAP-Ed nutritional education and the healthy incentive programs have been effective in having reduced obesity among SNAP uh, participants? There, there is uh, research to indicate that the, the availability of SNAP does result in healthier choices being made by SNAP families. So the, the risk of obesity, so obesity has gone down yeah. in SNAP recipients? That, that was my question. Is there any, is if, has it reduced obesity? You can get back to me oh, yeah. on that. <laughs> That's quite all right. Uh, along the similar lines, the summer EBT program, which you mentioned for children, is now permanent. States operating the summer EBT uh, run the SNAP model. So again, allowing access to sugary beverages, salty snacks, the whole deal. But interesting, the Indian tribal organizations operate the WIC model. So as I understand it, families receiving the summer, summer EBT under the WIC model are purchasing WIC approved foods, which we both, I think, recognize are generally much more nutritious foods than, than the wide variety of foods available under SNAP. Do you think that recipients could benefit if states operate a WIC model under uh, the Summer EBT program, like tribal organizations do, to ensure that we're providing kids with healthy food during the summer? Just, just like USDA does, for instance, during the school year in the National School Lunch and School Breakfast programs. Uh, uh, I think it's more complicated than that. Uh, oh, so it doesn't work for the tribes, tribal organizations? No, I'm not saying it doesn't work, uh, oh, okay. but obviously tribes are a smaller universe of people. <laughs> So what you're saying is that it works for the tribal organizations, no, but we don't think it'll work if you expand no, what, it. What I'm saying is, and I was going to respond to this, but you cut me off, there's a fairness issue here. Okay, there's a fairness and a consistency issue. Uh, if indeed the goal here is for taxpayer dollars to be directly linked to more nutritious decisions, are you going to make that same decision for uh, farm emergency relief? Farmer gets emergency check from the government, Cashes it, goes to the grocery store. Can, are you going to restrict him from? Why not? Uh, well, that, that's okay, the, so I mean, the fundamentally that's the issue. No, the, no, 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 it, no. I'm, I'm going to reclaim my time. Issue. We just had Francis Collins in a, in a discussion with the Doc Caucus this morning, and at the end, I asked him, Dr. Collins, Dr. Sharfstein, another doctor from the White House, all three doctors. Does it make any sense that we're providing non-nutritious foods in the SNAP program knowing we have an obesity epidemic? I urge you to ask some physicians you know as to whether or not it makes sense we do it. It's not and just then, poor people that are obese. It's middle-income people. It's rich people. I mean, it's an issue all the, across the Mr. country. Mr. Secretary, the difference is we're not buying food but for you the middle-class people. We're but, buying but, food. But, but you are. 
Absolutely, uh, you Mr. are, Secretary. I'm. I'm not going. <laughs> if you get any federal if, assistance, if you think that providing sugary beverages and salty snacks I, is a good idea, I don't think with that. the federal government. I, well, I, I then, then I hope you and I can work together on a solution. I don't think that. I think it's a matter of fairness. If you got to treat one, you got to treat them all. That's my point with the tribal organizations and some are EBT. 